And so maybe get to know each other, because this is all about community at the end of the day. Um, and I also want to make sure that it's conversational too. Hey Chris, it's good to see you. So I'd like to introduce you to my colleagues from NatWest who are here giving moral support and staring me down at the same time. <laughs> Right, brilliant. Thank you, Rob, for shutting the door. Appreciate that. Thank you. Right. So I don't know whether somebody can close that door for us because it's quite loud. That's brilliant. This is where it starts getting serious. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, it's really good to see everybody here today on a very successful open source in finance forum. Um, I'm James McLeod and I lead the open source program and NatWest Group. And when I was asked, uh, what is it that you would like to talk about today at OSFF? I thought, okay, you know, let's um, talk about something that's actually really kind of close to me. You know, something that I've been doing now for probably about 10 years, probably even further back, you know, because of who I am and what my beliefs are. To give you a real insight into what drives, drives me to be a community builder, but specifically a community builder within engineering, um, because there is kind of like this kind of possible division that can be created between what is a community and what is engineering. And so I'm actually hoping that by telling you my personal journey here, you'll kind of get what community is and the reason why I do this, and the reason that I'm inviting everybody here. So, what is the purpose of a, a community, specifically within engineering? So this is what actually drives me, because I really like that, you know, West Coast San Francisco um, type DevOps uh, engineering. Um, it's what introduced me into finance in the first place. It was about how can we actually accelerate the way that we engineer, but also bring people together on that journey. Um, and so for me, and this might surprise you because you see me on LinkedIn, you know, it's no secret, you know, I post videos. But the purpose of all of that is to get software developed faster and to bring people into those groups. I'm going to talk about all of the various different communities that I've built and the work that I'm doing within the NatWest OSPO. But right at the forefront of my mind, even when I was director of community here at Finos, was how can we start engineering faster and how can we keep our you know, foot on the pedal and move things forward faster. And that includes kind of like a fully agile DevSecOps, you know, um, how can we do this on, you know, short cycles of engineering whilst making sure that we're checking all of the checkboxes, working with all of our product owners, working within our teams. But the essential kind of driver is getting things done. I told you that would surprise you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so and now I've given you kind of like my internal belief around communities. So why doesn't that actually happen? You know, why is it that um, engineering teams generally don't form communities? And so if communities can get things done quicker, why aren't we working in communities? And what drives you know, this reason why I do this? Please come on in, there's plenty of room. You can shift my bag as well if you like. Um, so quite often, you know, um, a lot of it is down to you know, how we've learned how to engineer and how we've learned how to work together you know, uh, previously. Um, so we're all focused on milestones, you know, we're all focused on getting things done, but in our, you know, kind of very technical and very functionally designed way. Um, and sometimes all of those various, um, you know, engineering deadlines that we have can put the, the blinkers on, you know, like a horse on parade, you know, we kind of block things out. And I, I know this, you know, because, you know, believe it or not, I do actually come from an engineering background and I've been there before, you know. So prior to being part of an open source community, I was working on, you know, I was using Microsoft products. And I love Microsoft, okay, that's not a slur, but um, everything was very ganted. Everything was using Microsoft pro uh, Project. You know, everything was, you know, developing features for my team, you know, and this was before GitHub existed. And everything was, you know, very functionally specced and done according to the definitions that needed to be developed there and now. And when you're in that mindset, it's very easy not to look outside of that mindset for what has already happened, you know, kind of within the surrounding community that can actually help you deliver against your goals. And so, 
quite often, you know, the way that we actually work as engineers, Blink is, you know, that, you know, duplication of effort that can actually occur. And so we get a, a specification, we deliver towards that, we get our work done, and then we move on to the next thing. And believe it or not, that can actually happen, you know, across multiple dif different teams within the same organization. And then if you multiply that across, you know, multiple different organizations within the world of open source, you know, within the world of technology, you've then got a bit of a problem. And so that can actually lead to um, code bloat, you know. So if we're duplicating effort, and we're all very ESG kind of like minded now about how we're actually storing data, and if you think of a code commit in a repo as being data, we're actually, by duplicating effort and not talking to each other, contributing to, you know, unintended consequences, you know, further down the line. So our repositories get bigger, we're storing more data, it's taking us more time to do things. We don't have enough engineers in the world. And so things tend to slow down. And so the way that communities can actually help to solve this problem is by turning everybody around you, including your engineering colleagues, into customers. OK, so we're going from a very siloed world, you know, where we're delivering against functional specs, you know, probably for our project managers or even our product owners, to one where we're actually thinking of you and I as people who can really leverage our thinking and really leverage, you know, the work that we're doing, only if we think about it in a slightly different way. And so rather than just coming together as a group and talking about doing work, if we think about all of the work that we're doing as we're also architecting it and saying, how can we produce that work and place it in kind of like a repository or in an upstream registry or even, you know, in a banking artifactory, you know, how as James, an engineer within the teams, how can I package the work that I'm doing so other people can consume it? And if you are my customer, how can I actually listen to what you need? And how can I actually provide documentation around everything that I'm doing that allows you to consume that as well? And this then expands that very siloed world of you know, just delivering against your functional spec into one where you're also delivering against functional specs, but you're also doing it for the benefit of the people around you. And by doing so, you can then mutualize on problems, you can reduce that duplication of effort, you can then archive things that are also being duplicated you know, across your organization, and you can start getting things done as a collaborative workforce. And then if you move you know, outside into the world of open source, you can share that openly and actually start increasing um, your, your speed on delivery. Right, so. The other thing that I absolutely believe in is shipping and selling, right? So this is actually a mindset which probably doesn't sit inside financial services, but it is actually a very kind of like West Coast way of thinking about things. And it's something that I learned from, um, probably from Meta, all the way back, you know, before Meta, um, you know, was Meta and they were Facebook. They were delivering uh, React.js um, and a lot of, you know, various different complementary uh, modules into that ecosystem. And I remember um, speaking to some of the people, you know, who contributed Redux and, you know, various different uh, libraries into the uh, React.js and NPM ecosystem. You know, why do you do this? You know, what is your purpose? And they were saying, it's to ship and sell, you know. So in the context of open source, you're shipping continuously, right? So you need to reduce the cycle time of everything that you're doing, you know, even to your um, engineering community customers. So you're operating on short cycle times. Uh, you're automating everything. You know, you're, you're bringing as much as you can into automation. You're updating your documentations according to the version, you know, that you are actually releasing at that point. You know, you're not kind of context switching by putting things, you know, in various different places across different ecosystems. You're bringing things really tight, you know, into what it is that you're developing and you're shipping and you're selling. And the concept of shipping is get that version out there, you know, iterate far first and get it out into kind of like into your main line and then out into, into production. And the concept of selling is like what I'm doing here, right? So in terms of open source, you know, you reap the benefits through reducing, you know, uh, all of the duplicated tasks, you know, that the entire industry, you know, can produce. 
that's where you actually get your money back, you know, on all of that collected effort. You know, you do something once and you, you know, you then roll it across the industry. In terms of selling, you're literally going out there, you're talking to meetups, you're speaking to communities, um, you're bringing your colleagues, you know, to events like this, you're giving people the opportunity to present and you're advocating, 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 advocating. And that is what selling is. You're literally selling the benefits of everything that you're doing. And that is a totally different mindset to an engineer, you know, who is delivering against a functional spec. Because you don't have to sell. You know, you are, you know, in receipt of a functional spec that you've been provided. But if you want to disrupt that model, and if you want to reduce all of that complexity that you actually have in your repos, you have to learn how to break things down into the smallest form. Get it out there, you know, ship it, ship it, ship it, and get out and sell, sell, sell. Right, so that's it. That's what's in my mind, and I hope that I've communicated that well. So, these are my secrets. Right, so I don't know if it's a secret. I just thought that I'll tell it to you anyway. So how do you actually build a collaborative ecosystem? Because it's really easy to say, just get out there and do it. You know, tell everybody about it. You know, share your, you know, the work that you're doing and reduce kind of like the complexity and duplication in your repos. But how do you do it? So the very first thing I did was way back before I had a beard. One of those people in that picture is me. Um, <laughs> It's probably the person who's actually really rigid because doing, uh, forming a community and speaking in an event like this isn't actually easy and it's a leap of faith. Um, I am actually the person on the far left um, as I'm facing. Um, this was me kind of like um, stepping into my beliefs. You know, prior to this, I always had an ambition um, to actually start an engineering community and get involved in open source. But I didn't know where to start, and so I had to take a leap of faith. Um, at that time, I was working in Spitalfields um, for uh, Sapient, who are part of Publicis, and I know that they are here. They're also Finos members. Um, and it was around AngularJS. So this was a framework which was very popular you know, at the time when I actually got involved in open source. It was when things were moving away from proprietary products into open kind of you know, front-end development, away from the server. But there wasn't, you know, any documentation that surrounded it. You know, AngularJS was actually produced by Google, uh, but it wasn't like the .NET framework. There was no MSDN. And it was like, okay, so how are we going to learn this? You know, what do you do? And so I heard, you know, starting up a meetup, getting people together, you know, sharing, you know, everything that you had learned, and then, you know, inviting more people to do the same, you know, is a good way of doing that. So I thought, okay. I'll um, start a meetup called Angular JS Bring Your Own Project. And I did that in London, invited a few people to that, and that actually started growing. Um, and that was my very first entry point into it. Maybe half a dozen people came to the first one, but we kind of treated the meetup as if it was a conference, you know, and so we gave the same value to the people who were there as we would do to people, you know, who would fill an auditorium, you know, or maybe even an arena. We were very kind of like clear um, on making sure that everybody got the same level of value. But in order to do that, you need to face your fears and you need to give it a shot, right? And that is actually the, the, the most difficult thing. Being that rigid James up there is not easy. So just go and do it. I did it. And, um, I've never looked back. And if it wasn't for Angular JS Bring Your Own Project, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have the career that I have now. And so it does lead places. So that Angular JS uh, meetup that I started in 2013, I think, has actually grown into the here and now. It's gone through a few iterations, you know, because you have to, uh, you know, listen to the market. Um, open source. Uh, it kind of evolves over time quite organically. And what's in vogue now may not be in vogue, you know, kind of six months, one year, two years, five years down the line. Um, AngularJS went through a few kind of disturbances in the force because um, Google actually got their release model wrong and there were too many breaking changes. And that evolved into a React.js meetup. During the pandemic, that got a bit disrupted, and so we rebranded. Re Plus, also the JavaScript ecosystem, you know, moved from the front end, and now it's you know running back to front. You know, so in the server, um, on the databases, 
uh, all the way through to the front end. You know, you've got no JS microservices being built. And so we truly diversified. You know, we listened to the market, we listened to the community, and we kind of rebranded ourselves. Um, and so if you see me on LinkedIn talking about London JS, that is that original um, Angular JS meetup. So the rigid James with no beard, who looks about 13 years younger, um, has actually evolved into the Gandalf looking guy who I'm actually. Um, and somebody said I'm, I'm like their pet Santa as well. But I don't, I don't care, you know. <laughs> I've kind of like matured with this community as well, and you will do with yours too. You know, so step into it. You know, find a subject matter that actually really appeals to you as well, and that you can feel that you can talk about without even thinking about it. And so I've kept with you know JavaScript, even though my JavaScript um, career has moved on. You know, I'm now leading the open source program, and I've also been Finos director of community. You know, but I've stuck with the London JS because I, my heart is still within JavaScript, um, and the meetup has grown from four people into three and a half thousand plus, and we've just actually merged another meetup into this one, which could actually double the community, um, and so the amount of value that you can actually spread, you know, through um, you know owning a meetup or kind of you know being an organizer of a meetup, is massive. So you may have noticed that I've been giving out stickers um, around this person um, who is the NatWest OSPO mascot. Might seem a little bit strange, okay, um, but I'm okay with that um, because I've learned across my time building communities that a community needs something that actually um, uh, forms an identity and a branding around it. You know, it's very difficult for people to actually, you know, uh, gravitate towards something without having something to gravitate towards. Um, I'm lucky with London JS, so JavaScript actually has a very big brand around it already. So the uh, yellow background, you know, with the .js, we kind of um, appended um, uh, or prepended London to it, um, and. That is our brand, and that is what people draws us to the London JS community. Within that West, you know, there isn't a brand around an uh, open source program office, you know, and we're also leaning into very heavily uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we want to make sure that, you know, me being, you know, um, a man, okay, uh, I don't put any subconscious biases into the way that, you know, we actually create our brand. Um, and so there was a great level of thought about, okay, how do we make sure that open source in that West and also inner source in that West, you know, is inclusive of everybody across, you know, engineering and also into, you know, other related roles as well that people can get behind, but it also doesn't clash with our NatWest brand, you know, because um, we've also got internal comms teams, you know, that we need to make sure are also on this journey with us. And so we thought, okay, let's create a character that can express itself, bring emotion. You know, we can actually use a digital version, put it on our internal readmes, you know, so people can see that it's related to open source and inner source in that West. Um, we can then evolve the character arc around our brand, you know, so people know this related to the OSPO, but maybe, you know, there's certifications that it can also represent, um, plus also different awards and recognition. Um, and also maybe even uh, talk about our maturity model within our internal repositories. But ultimately, across all of that engineering um, uh, outcome, you know, that we also want the mascot to represent, we need to have a community brand, you know, that people can actually come to. And when we're out, you know, giving talks or when we're giving internal talks, um, we can, you know, put that somewhere and people know that it represents the open source program office. It's a step into the unknown. You know, I'm going to see how things develop. You know, just like, you know, with London JS and, you know, Angular JS, if things work, you do more of it. If things don't work, you, you adapt and evolve. But if you don't step into that fear and step into the unknown, then you're never going to know. And so this is something that we're trying out. And, you know, it's also something that, you know, I believe that we also want to do. We want to be an inclusive open source program office and also a very inclusive uh, community. So um, 
what you also need to be able to provide within your community. And remember, you know, everything that surrounds a community is to get things done, you know, and really kind of reduce the cycle time between doing engineering work across, you know, distributed teams. So let's keep that in the back of our minds. If you are running a community, um, it's really important that um, you're not just bringing people together, you know, to talk about things. You know, you don't want your community to be um, thought of uh, as like a lean coffee continuously. Um, lean coffee has its, you know, place, um, but ultimately the thing that counts is getting commits into repositories. You know, and even if you speak to um, Gab, you know, around Finos. Um, ultimately, this entire conference is about getting commits in repos. You know, that is like the, the base level unit of success for any open source project or for any project, you know, that is collabor collaborative and bringing people together. So in order to enable that, you know, it's also true that you're going to be uh, running communities around types of engineering um, that some people may not know a great deal about. And so if you can provide, you know, opportunities to learn. Um, so an example of that is when you have an open source meetup, you know, like I do with London JS, or an inner source meetup like we have uh, within NatWest, bring the engineers into that, you know, so you bring community members into those meetups to really talk about what their projects are and how people can get involved and what it does, you know, but don't just say, here's a checklist of all the stuff that we've done and turn it into like an agile retrospective, bring people in to really sell, sell, sell. You know, provide that uh, platform, you know, to bring collaboration in and speed things up. And believe it or not, that whole kind of inviting other people in to talk about stuff is also that learning path as well. Because engineers love it when people share their IDEs and share, you know, what has actually been done, even if it's version release to version release. And the outcome of that is that you learn something new. Um, so opportunities to learn um, and educate, you know, people within your community definitely do. The other thing is um, try and advocate and also uh, bring growth into the community as well. And the way that you can do that, in the same way as we've got our OSPO mascot, is around reward and recognition. You know, so for every achievement that somebody actually um, obtains or any, um, you know, anything that's actually, you know, a cut above um, the fear factor that somebody may not, you know, have done before, and it's the first time that they've done it, like a first commit into a repo, a first merge request, you know, the first blog post that somebody has written, um, the first conference talk or meetup talk that somebody has done, provide some form of reward and recognition. And so this little um, character, is going to hopefully bring our engineers on that learning journey with us and be kind of like um, something that people can wear either electronically on an online or internal profile um, or maybe a sticker or a token of some sort that they can actually you know, have as some form of reward and recognition. And you'll also notice that um, a lot of you know, the posting that I do um, is actually recognizing other people for you know, how they're growing. Um, that's something that I didn't put onto this slide. You will notice that, you know, on LinkedIn or internal, you know, Viva Engage that we use, you know, within that West to communicate across the broader community, I'm often rewarding and recognizing, you know, people for what they've done. And I'll maybe, you know, 20% of the time talk about myself, but, you know, that's very rarely. Always promote kind of like what the community has done and then save a little bit of in reserve for yourself because it does come round, you know, the success of your community does reflect back on you. It's an unintended consequence, but it just does happen. So the other thing is, you know, make sure that you are also communicating with your community as well because, you know, just looking at GitHub or looking at, you know, GitLab, um, it'll bring a lot to it, but you'll also notice that there are a lot of, you know, flat, um, you know, contribution graphs, you know, across the ecosystem of an internal kind of like um, version control system or an open source version control system like GitLab or GitHub. It's really important, you know, that you find, you know, your method of engagement. I've tried Twitter, I've tried X, you know, I've tried various different platforms and they've not worked for me. I think that there are, you know, different communication methods 
that actually really resonate with who you are as an individual. And a lot of these um, networks have you know, billions of users. And so you're going to find a network, the number one you align to for your values, and number two, you have a community that engage with you as well. So LinkedIn works really well for me. And I think the Linux Foundation will probably say it works really well for them as well. Um, X, I've never been able to you know, kind of form a community around that, so you won't find me on there. And I've dabbled with TikTok a little bit, um, but that is more really um, for me to understand kind of like the generational gap between me and the people in this photo here, um, who are also London JS. Um, because as you kind of like evolve with your community, you'll notice that you know, the generations also evolve as well. And so you need to understand how people are communicating. Otherwise, you're going to be you know, sitting on your own at the front of a meetup, not knowing how to engage with people. The other thing that's actually really useful are brown bag sessions you know, or lunch and learns, you know, bringing people into short kind of, hey, how do you fancy learning something new? You know, so you don't have to necessarily bring you know, 100 people to a meetup. You can bring a squad of people you know, to you know, a meeting room in your organization in order to learn something and in order to demonstrate something. That is also a very effective way of you know, building a community and also building engineer to engineer relationships as well. And remember, the purpose is to get things done. And so sharing things that have been successful and also sharing things that you would like other people to be able to engage with the news that is a really great way of doing it. And the word of mouth from those actually does you know, travel you know, really far. Um, don't be, um, you know, absolutely believe if you change the culture of engineering by having a lunch and learn session where people are able to communicate free and open, that word of mouth will actually um, travel a long way. And then, as we're doing with our uh, distinguished engineer community, See if you can figure out a way to give um, you know, access to certifications you know, for people to be, ab be able to learn, but then also get something that qualifies them within a certain subject matter expertise. Um, this is where we're uh, taking advantage of being fin uh, Finos Gold members um, and all of the training and certification you know, seats that we get. Um, I'm starting to, you know, distribute that out to, you know, our um, key engineering leads um, and also our distinguished engineers so they can also spread the word of open source and also work with me so I'm not a single, you know, um, person within an organisation. You know, we can then distribute kind of like this way of working and this met methodology together as well. So, looping back round, talking about community, we're now back into the world of DevOps again, um, because all of this stuff can actually be measured. You know? And if you think about DevSecOps and Agile and DevOps, everything's about um, how you actually measure, um, how you recognize, how you reward, and how you then repeat that. So within NatWest, we're looking at tactical solutions for figuring out how people are collaborating. We are... Uh, GitLab partners, you know, we're very open about that. You know, we've spoken about that before in conferences. Um, and, and GitHub, you know, provide GraphQL APIs, you know, that give you access to, you know, the entire landscape of both of those systems. See if you can get on the end of that to see, you know, how many people are contributing into repos, how many people are starring repositories, you know, how many issues are being raised, how many issues are being closed, how many pull requests are being raised, how many pull requests are being closed. And then just, you know, kind of dabble within those metrics to, you know, see if you've got, like, um, some form of narrative that can then be fed back or at least create um, a very, uh, what is it, static baseline, something just to kick yourself off on that journey. And then you can move out into, you know, more strategic um, solutions to that. So the Chaos Project within the Linux Foundation, you know, provides certain uh, platforms that allow you to measure. Um, they have something called 8 uh, which we've been looking at within open source readiness within Finos. And Dawn, who's here today, who's um, one of the directors of um, uh, Chaos, came and actually gave a talk at a roundtable about Chaos Project and how that can be applied inside a bank. The other thing is um, bring systems of collaboration, you know, that allow you to work as asynchronously into your bank as well. 
So we started rolling out discourse um, within that West, which you know is also an open source um, product. You know, we're looking at the various different methods that people like to collaborate across different uh, engineering systems. And so you have your, you know, version control systems all the way through, you know, to how people like to share and collaborate, you know, asynchronously and also in person. And then ultimately, you know, once you've got all of these various different measures, remember to reward and recognize and bring, you know, people on that journey with you. And you might um, know or have heard of John O'Bacon, and he calls that your um, community on-ramp. You know, it's how can you take somebody from being a non-contributor to your community all the way up through the uh, maturity curve, you know, being a full collaborator and maintainer. Um, and ultimately, this is, you know, kind of like the uh, methodology that Jono uh, is bringing to the table as well and, you know, how we would like to, um, you know, work as an engineering community within that West. And all of that is done through understanding your community, understanding what people are doing, rewarding and recognising and shipping and selling. And with that... I'm hoping that I'm on time. I think that that's 30 minutes. I don't know if there's time for Q&A. I kind of think that we may have maybe a couple of questions that can be thrown in. Um, and I really hope that helps. You know, that is kind of like who I am, my journey, and the reason why I do this. And so I'm James McLeod, Open Source Program, Open Source Program Lead in NatWest. Any other questions? It's up to you. Thank you.